Well, as you can see, conditions here at the Masters are not good for getting people in and out of the track after torrential rain yesterday. Um, yeah, and the rain was absolutely torrential. There's Richard Webb just turning up. Right. Oi, Rich. Yeah. Oi, Ben. You're going to get on the side today? Uh, it's spare passenger. Spare passenger. I'm going to get on the side. <laughs> <laughs> and do one of the practices to save anything. And here we have Matthew and Rhoda getting ready. <laughs> So what do you reckon, Matt? Yeah, we're gonna, I think we're gonna piss it, mate. We're just camping, no problem. It is Oh, I oh, Chris. Hello mate. Yeah, all right, mate. Well, was this your birthday? It was, yeah. I was, was a big 4 0 yesterday. Big 4 0. Yeah, yeah. You don't look a day over 50. Yeah. Thank you very much. Morning, Tom. How are we doing, mate? Oh, I'm going to give you a hug, mate. Here we have Tom Cossa. Is he going to beat his brother today? Morning, Will. How are you doing, right? Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome to the right. people just yeah, arriving, right. just to have you to keep you up to date. How's the bike? You can obviously see that the uh, riders are having to be towed in, unfortunately, so the practice goes back at the moment till 11.15 from 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah, Steph. Hey, mate, you all right? Yeah, you? Yeah, we carried it on. Yeah, well, we tried the MT-10, but didn't like it. You know, the Tora. Yeah, mate. We put that in for the Masters in 2018. Well, what we did... I'm not going to film you. 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 Hello, mate. I've been told, I've been given my instructions, I've got to film you. I'm just a bit worried about this. This looks like a, a funny kind of toy, it sexual does. aid. It does, yeah. doesn't it? I'll move it out of the way. It? <laughs> it, it does. You've got to film me, have you? Why do you have to film me? I'm under strict instructions. I'm not sure who by. Not me. All right. Is that what you call it? Oh, mine, mine begins with W, but it's not a whip it. Yeah. Mick, I'll go out of the way. You can go out of the way, you can go out of the way. He's not camera shy, I tell you. How you doing, Mick? Yeah, I'm pretty Yeah, looking forward to today? I'm absolutely looking forward to it. Track looks amazing. So. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's in really good, Mick. Yeah. Once we can get everyone in and get going. Yeah, that's, we'll be... that's been the problem, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> What time for a bike on the camera? Got a camera on the bike here. Can't even speak, is it? 
if I put it on a bike today, it'd have to go pointing backwards because it would get filled in. Yeah. Wouldn't it? it wouldn't last long, would it? Go back a Good morning and welcome to Chelmsford. Thankfully the sun is shining, we've got a drying wind as well to the 2023 British Masters. As you will have seen by the early footage, due to a horrendous storm last evening, the uh, Riders are having to be towed into the pits. Uh, a couple of days ago we were wondering if we could get enough water on the track to stop the dust coming up, but that storm has certainly put that right. As I said, it is the 2023 British Masters. As usual, Sean Harvey and his crew have laid out a magnificent looking track. It should be some real, real quick racing. Super wide bends as well, nice long straights. Everything is there to produce the best quality racing. We're looking for a big crowd to come in because obviously these are very very expensive meetings to run nowadays. In the solos Chris Harris looking for a hat trick of wins, three on the trot and the same applies of course to Mark Cossa also looking for three on the trot. Another plus in the sidecars, very interesting to see how he goes today. For the first time in many, many years, we have uh, Steve Smith in action. This is his 30th Masters, and he's still capable of certainly making the final anyway, but he looks as good as ever, he looks as fit as ever. So that is something very, very unique indeed. And as I say, uh, Chris Harris is looking for three on the trot in the solo. So hopefully the sun continues to shine and the wind continues to dry the track. We should have a brilliant 2023 British Masters. So we've come down in the pits, we've gone straight to the sidecar pits and we've uh, we've got Neil Owen and Jason Farwell with us and uh, Neil obviously not not done any racing really this year apart from last week on the sand. Yes, uh, we decided uh, we we're trying to do a lot of work on the, on the bike development work but we've had to go back to our carburetor and the old system. So last couple of weeks getting it all ready, we decided to do the, the sand race, the beach race up in uh, uh, Blackpool um, and then obviously the master so yeah. we've kept the, the best to the last I hope. Yeah well it's a bit of a baptism of fire but obviously you've done plenty of masters in the past uh, and obviously the one at Astra being one that sticks out more recently for the pair of you. Uh, Jason fell off there but at least you're in the final and uh, yeah that must be where you're aiming today. Oh yeah definitely um, the I say the group of uh, riders that we are up against, they've had a few more miles, a few more meetings this year, but uh, we just got to put up behind us, do 100% out on the track, and I'm, I'm sure that we'll, uh, we'll really push them to get into the final this year. And Jason, you've, uh, you've had a couple of extra goes, I think you've ridden somewhere else, haven't you, this year? It's not just, uh, you're not just done the sand racing, I think you've been... Yeah, you know, I've done the Battle of Britain with Clint Blondell, just uh, after what happened, just to get him back out on the bars, naturally. She's a bit nervous just to help him out, but we was plagued by bike problems there, so we only done practice in the one heat. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we done the, the sand last week, which was an experience again. Yeah. Different again from the year before, different from Guernsey, um, but it was the same for all of us. Um, and then, like I said, this one, and we got Roach next week. Yeah. Um, so open, we can carry on the form from last weekend to this weekend. Yeah, good stuff. And. Uh, yeah, Neil, it'd be nice to get the V-Twin and Masters at some point, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, we, you know, the commitment with Jason and his family and, and myself with the family, Gary and Gordon Engineering, we, we put in a lot of effort into it. Um, there's a lot of things coming out next year, uh, but what we got this year, we're going to give 100% and try to really push them to the limit. Oh, we're looking forward, look forward to the, the developments next year, but good luck for today. Obviously, yeah. it's a bit soggy at the minute, and we know that that suits you, so, yeah, good luck. Yeah, maybe a bit more rain uh, would suit us, but we've just got to take it uh, whatever's out there. Great stuff. Have a good one, guys, and, uh, yeah, we'll see Thank you later you. on. Okay, Thank you. Great. So, carrying on around the uh, sidecar pits, we've got Sorry, Matt Fumer, <laughs> Steve Smith, just doing it. <laughs> <laughs> This is very strange, I have to say. We've got Steve Smith and Keith Wall either side of the camera. It's like we've gone back in time. 
<laughs> and then we've got Matt Fumer and Andy Wilson. It's like we've gone into a time warp, but yeah, great to be at the Masters, guys. Obviously, you've had a bit of a go at it together now, back as a team for a couple of years, and uh, yeah, this is the one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one that we uh, spend all year trying to get the bike sorted for, um, and, and, and over the winter, it, it's never ending, and no doubt, after today, we'll start planning on next year's because it's just it just revolves every year. You're trying new things, um, yeah, and we're always tweaking something or other. So, yeah, it's the one we want. Yeah, absolutely. And Andy, uh, no pre-race nerves at the minute. You feeling it, or you've uh, yeah, you've been here before? Yeah, I've been here before. I'm saying on the way down, I don't think I've ever been as calm coming into a Masters as this time around. I think a, a little bit every meeting we go to the sort of these days is a master's lineup so it's you're getting used to riding with these guys so you trust them all the bike's running well we've started to gel there's a few things that have really clicked into place over the past few meetings so the track looks great i mean yeah it's it's just bring it on we're really excited we're really ready to go and, and have some fun like yeah good and uh, it's an interesting point matt that andy's made there with the fact that everyone's racing everybody all the time you sort of know where you are before you even get here now don't you yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, uh, I don't do it as much as I used to, but if you would, if you study the videos, you can see what people's quirks are, and as long as you can remember, you can sometimes use that to an advantage. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'm probably a bit down on my. Uh, I haven't probably done enough studying up to today. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, you, you, there's certain people you know will do certain things on certain laps, yeah. and you can kind of sometimes plan that into your race. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's quite interesting to know that you're thinking about that going round, but. Um, yeah, hopes for today, obviously top six I'd imagine, but yeah, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, uh, top six uh, for sure, and um, there's no reason why we can't make the podium, uh, and that's the, that's, the, uh, that's the main aim. Yeah. Well, good luck, good luck with it guys, um, you know lots of people will be cheering you on, the people's champ, and uh, yeah, hope it all goes well. Nice one, thank, thank you very much, much. cheers. <laughs> Well, still in the side cup pits, we're now with, uh, well, brand new uh, sand racing champions, I guess, Colin Blackburn uh, and Carl Pugh. And, uh, yeah, another Masters, Colin, and, uh, yeah, you must be very much looking forward to this one, as, uh, as you always do. I won't go that far. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's, it's looking all right, actually, as long as it doesn't rain today, and I don't think it talks of it, I think, uh, I think it'll be all right. I think that uh, a lot of the outfits are going towards this uh, strung, slung out front end um, and you've obviously pretty much still got what you've used for many years. Uh, what do you think, why have you sort of stuck with that and what sort of advantage do you think it gives you? Uh, to be fair, I don't think it does. Um, but no, I've got these two, two steer bikes, I've had them for a while and I know them. So, you know, I'm getting a bit too uh, long in the tooth to think about changing too much now. Yeah, although well, Smithy's just uh, obviously come back and he's got this long, strung out Ducker frame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think, he, yeah, I think um, from what I hear, he's gone all right on it as well. So, no, good good luck to him. But uh, no, I think I'll be just be staying with what I've got to see my time out. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Well, I mean, it's uh, we've got Carl on the back, of course, and Carl, uh, yeah, many rate you as one of the best in the game, really, at the moment. And I think that you're proving that still, even though. Uh, talking about long in the tooth <laughs> but uh, no in all seriousness Carl I mean you you're one of only three people that's won this event with two different drivers um, you're still racing week in week out when Colin's not riding you're all racing and you must still be absolutely buzzing with the sport yeah I must be to jump on the back and I <laughs> yeah just just love it just do it and it's uh, to me it's just another meeting yeah. I know I should probably shouldn't do but I just like yeah just here for the ride and, uh, it would be, you know, for yourself, it'd be third Masters title, would it be? Or it would be, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. would be quite a big yeah. thing for a passenger. Well, it, it, it'd make me six British Championships all in all, so it, it'd be nice to uh, to do it yeah. and, and level with Steve. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it would be good. Yeah, well, good luck with that. And uh, coming back to Colin, I mean, the track, had a look at the track, it's got uphill, slightly uphill start. I don't know how you feel about that. Straight, long straights, tight corners. I don't know if you're thinking that's a bit of me or what you're thinking is really. Uh, yeah, I don't think the uphill starts will bother anybody. Um, and the track, yeah, the, I mean, the straights look in proportion to the corners, which they need to be. And uh, no, it's the same for everybody. But no, it looks all right. I think it'll be okay. Stuff. Well, good luck for today. Obviously, uh, lots of people are uh, tipping Mark to do the winning, but you're the ones that take it to him. So 
Yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll, 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 we'll try and stop him. <laughs> good luck for the day and have a good one. Thank you, mate. Right, still in the sidecar pits, we've now got uh, a crew that many are thinking might do a bit of uh, yeah, really good day today. Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Uh, Terry, the season's gone really well. I mean, you've been rostrums and podiums everywhere. And um, yeah, so coming into this Masters, you're definitely one of the favourites, I think. Yeah, um, yeah obviously, like, yeah, like you say, this season's gone pretty good. Last season went pretty well for us, really, like for the first time out. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit of pressure, like, because yeah, everyone keeps telling me it's going to be my day, but yeah, obviously everyone's there to be beaten, and yeah, you just got to see what happens on the day, really. Yeah, I was sort of going to ask. My next question was a bit about pressure, really. Uh, obviously, Liam Liam wouldn't feel pressure if it punched him in the face, but but you like you, a lot of people are saying that you're up and amongst it, and obviously uh, a lot of people around you, as we've just been talking about pre the interview. Um, how do you sort of cope with the pressure generally? Um, I don't really, I was just sort of, yeah, just sort of blanking everyone out to be fair. I know it sounds a bit rude, but yeah, just sort of go out and then once I get to the first race, a bit of practice out of the way, it sort of goes in. But yeah, it'll get easier as the day goes on, hopefully. And, uh, and one of the things that obviously really help you is your gating. Like you seem to be absolutely rapid at the start. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know what I'll do different to everyone else, but obviously what I'm doing is helping me out, which yeah, is good really, because... Yeah, you need to get out that start really to sort of give you half a chance. So, yeah. and Liam, obviously you've got a bit to do with that as well because uh, you're the man on the back. And um, big day for you today. Obviously, we were just talking about it just now. Today, you've got two things to chase if you get to win it today. You've got obviously, uh, if you win it, you're the first person to have won it with three different drivers. Um, and then you pointed out to me that if you win it, you're the first one to win it five times as well. So it's a big day today. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like like Terry says, everyone's there to be beat. Um, and I don't see why we can't do it. Um, but yeah, we'll just see how the day goes. And have you got any any idea why you're gating so good? Is there something you're doing on the back that none of the rest of us know about? No, it's just one of them. I think it's we've bonded well together straight away. And we, know, we now know what the bike can do from the start. And we've... We did a lot of meetings, just testing different bits, and yeah, and it's it's worked. We know what to do now for a start, and that's that. Well, good luck today. I don't know how you've set the bike up. You've had a look at the track and everything else. Has there been much of a any scratching heads over setup, or you tend to do something and then change it as you go? Uh, we, well, we sort of start with gearing. Yeah, every every meeting we go to, really, sort of start somewhere in the middle. Yeah, do first practice and then yeah, you can go either way then and just go from there. How much does uh, input does Rob have in all of that? To be fair, he just apart from like the washing the bike and things like that, and obviously all the main things which obviously got to be done in the workshop, he leaves us to it really. Yeah, so yeah, it's good to be really because yeah, you got to learn from how you do it. So yeah, and you'll be absolutely delighted if you have a good day today, no doubt. But uh, yeah, good luck today. Hope it all goes well, and uh, yeah, we'll probably see you at the end. No worries. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. So, Tom Cossa and uh, Wayne Rickards have uh, been absolutely flying this year. Obviously, had the win at Frittenden that everyone's talking about. Uh, second again last week at our Southern Centre Championships. And here we are at the Masters. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling good, mate, yeah. Any, any changes or anything since, you've, uh, since you last rode it? No, nothing whatsoever. No, we've got a good setup. We, uh, we haven't actually changed the bike in three years. We've just learned to ride it. Yeah. We're just working on ourselves more than the bike. We know the bike's capable, so yeah. go out there and see what happens. There's a lot of that that goes on, isn't there? You see a lot of people tinkering and changing and swapping and doing different bits, but yeah, I think a lot can be said for just learn how to ride what you've got. The thing is, we, we're, I'm not like my brother, as most of you know. I'm, we've got good riding ability together. Um, and what we found was we were making decisions to change things that were detrimental to the speed. And what we learned over the last 10 meetings spanning two years was that the base set that we had was always the best. Right. We just tried to chase things. Yeah. You know, it's different for other bikes. We've got an engine and no one else is running. Everyone else is on cross planes, but we've got the newer model, which is different. So we've got no datum. We can't use other riders for, you know, what are you doing, this, that, and the other. So we're the best, the best approach and the reason me and Wayne have been quick this year is we literally haven't changed anything. Oh, okay. It's quite interesting to know, yeah. And, uh, Wayne, obviously, um, really enjoying it on the back of uh, Tom, and it's uh, 
something that you've really grown together now. Like you really, I know you've been together a long time, yeah. but you seem yeah. to be a real unit. Yeah, I mean, I gel well with quite a lot of people. Um, been riding a long time now, but when I jumped on with Tom, we gelled together really well. Um, and then I started to commit and we just took off ever since and every season we've just got better and better. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, I absolutely love riding on the back. I mean, I'm 40 years old now. Um, like every year I say, oh, it's going to be my last year. But I say it after a rough ride or a rough track. But then, and then we go to another meeting. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. But yeah. I couldn't tell you when I'm going to give up. So um, just, just um, yeah. So um, unfortunately, Tom, I'm still with you. <laughs> yeah, every time you want to give up, he yeah. rings you again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did badger me for a long time, didn't he? Kept on and on and on. First season we rode it on and on, so I, I, I gave in, and then yeah, it's just worked well. Yeah, yeah it really has. And uh, yeah, like if we just reflect on the season so far, I mean, like we said at the top, like it's just been a solid season all round, really. Undoubtedly, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've carried a different approach since we're racing this year. Um, I started the business two years ago. Wayne's the same. We've both been just stressed, and I think we're now using this, not focusing and coming here with pressure. We've got to do well. Using this as an escape from the business, and that's right. the difference, certainly with my mentality. I used to, years gone by, come here, I'm under the, the shadow of Mark, or Mark's under my shadow. Um, <laughs> so I'll come here in so much pressure, but now I, I don't care. Yeah. I just want to come here and ride my bike and have fun, and that's the difference. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, good insight. So, yeah, obviously, you must be aiming to win it today. That must be the aim. Without a doubt. There's one meeting of the year that you want to win. Everybody, Everybody wants it. Everywhere. We, we're getting closer, so, you know. It, I mean, we. We should have had a good meeting last year, really, at the Masters, but yeah. I was unfit. I had to stand up to change gears. I've been in physio so much, been riding, yeah, so it's, it's, it's coming together nicely. Uh, across the top two would be the dream, I'm guessing, but as long as you're on the top step. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, as long as we all go home in one piece, that is the fundamental, in my opinion, but we're here to win. Yeah. We're here to win. Well, good luck today, guys. Lots of people excited to see how you go, and, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll be at the pointy end. Hopefully, mate. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, here we are, Mark Cosser and uh, the returning Carl Blythe, the uh, the men to beat. And you've been the men to beat for a long, long time. This isn't a new feeling for you. Um, so another Masters, Mark, but this would be your eighth if you were to win it. And uh, yeah, so is there any added pressure for that? No, not really. Just go there and ride my bike. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this year, obviously, once again, you've been the man to beat everywhere you've gone. Uh, every time you do get beat, then everyone gets excited. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> yeah, my problem is I keep playing with things and trying to develop, but this year it hasn't worked. So, um, at your meeting, the last meeting, we went back to, well, I went back to exactly what we know, and it worked. So, yeah. stick with what we know today. Yeah, and you've obviously, lots of people talk about you having the laptop on and various developments with the bike and things like that what sort of things do you change and there's obviously there's development that you're leading at the moment in the sport that other people aren't doing i'm just monitoring the engine so everything that i'm monitoring on the laptop is temperatures and pressures so just monitoring the engine so check that there's nothing going the wrong way and uh, any potential problems that are going to cost me a lot of money <laughs> yeah and uh let's bring in carl because carl's back after um yeah, it was a four-year layoff, wasn't it, really? And uh, for, forced layoff, but yeah, feeling good, feeling excited. Yeah, this is where as fit as it can get. So in the space, time, limited time I've had, but I've been working out. So we just see what happens on the day. We've only got to win one race at the end of the day. It's a big day for you, Carl. I don't know if you realise, but uh, if you were to win today, you'd be the the most successful passenger ever at the Masters. I didn't realise that. No, thanks for the added pressure. And the other person that could do that today is Liam Brown. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we've, um, we'll just see what happens. It will be, will be. So Great stuff. And as a team, you'd be the most successful team to have ever ever uh, done the Masters too. But Mark, it must be great to have Carl back on. He's somebody that you know so well and have had so many good times with. Yeah, Carl's good. We know each other inside out. He knows what I'm going to do before I'm going to do it. So, yeah, we'll just make some starts and see what happens. Well, good luck today, guys. Great to, uh, great to see you back together. And, uh, yeah, title number eight and three in a row as well. Nice one. Cheers. Thank you. So, finally made our way to the solo pits. We've caught up with uh, Zach Weignek. Zach's uh, won this title before. Uh, having a really good season, to be fair, Zach. It's going really well on the continent. Yeah, good. Um, I haven't really done much over, over here. Um, but yeah, I'm racing abroad in the world long track is going well, so um, we're still in contention and yeah, it's a good point to be at halfway for a season. 
Do you think that riding at a British grass track, is it going to be a bit of time to, you're going to need a bit of time to get into it, do you think? Yeah, a little bit, I think. But um, no, luckily we rode for a couple of weeks ago, that was a grass track. So if uh, it looks good, obviously the weather's a bit of a shame and uh, I don't think it will affect the track. And um, yeah, not a new club, but uh, a new track. So hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, and it's uh, obviously Chris probably probably starts his favourite given that he's won it twice in a row now but uh, I think lots of people are tipping you to be the man to do it if anyone does. Yeah that's a good thing um, no we've been fighting back and forth obviously I crashed in the final in 2021 and um, it was a good final last year as well with Chris and Paul so yeah hopefully get through get to the final and then anything happens then. Yeah, yeah it's an interesting one with the one-off winner take all final isn't it because it's just a lottery at that point yeah it is um, some people like it some people don't it seemed to work in my favour a few times and it hasn't but um, no I suppose you can argue both ways some days if you've scored all the points and you've won it consistently but you never know if you have a, a bad race or you're out in front and a, a mechanical failure it's, it's not really your fault so yeah I suppose it's hard you've got to try and pace yourself to the final and then have a good go then. Give it a go, yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck today, Zach. Hope it all goes well. Great to see you on the British Grass Track. Thanks, mate. So more solo riders, we've got uh, Charlie Powell and Paul Cooper, two riders that are bound to be up towards the pointy end today, two riders that have been at the pointy end many times in the Masters before, and uh, we'll start with you, Coops. Um, decent season so far? No, not really. <laughs> I've had a bit, bit of troubles early on this season, things just weren't quite working out for me. Uh, we had a bit of a nightmare at the World Long Track Qualifier, European Qualifier, I, I came off in the first heat, uh, but bent my bike a little bit, hurt myself, so yeah, it's been a bit bit of a crap start to season, but then about a few weeks off, just sulked a little bit to be fair, a um, oh, few weeks, yeah, a yeah. <laughs> few weekends off, didn't do anything, uh, and then we rode last weekend on the beach and we loved it, the beach was great, it was difficult, but the whole meeting went really well, Trisha did a great job, um, and we managed to win that again, British champion again, so yeah, we're on a bit of a high now, so hopefully today we can, we can keep going and hopefully get on the steps. Yeah, good. I mean, it did look physical, that track at uh, Cheshire, the deep sand. It looked like it was, yeah, not, not like Vazon Bay was. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely. And last year when they ran it, it was, it was too wet. But obviously, there'd been a storm out and it was very wet sand and it was difficult for the bikes to keep running. But the wetter sand makes the track better because yeah. it keeps it more firmer. Where this was dry, I hadn't had the tide in for three or four days. So it dug out quite a lot, which made it really difficult. And bit dangerous to be fair but we're all experienced riders and we all managed to do the job and the club again cut the races down a little bit so we we just did three heats in the final and yeah it was it was hard but it was the same for everyone and we, we managed to win it yeah great stuff and uh charlie you weren't at the sand racing but you've done plenty of racing this year obviously a really good meeting up at the uh dalton barracks dalton yeah, barracks i was doing some sulking as well <laughs> i did some, no, so i've done it i've obviously done the other european semi that um obviously the one that paul wasn't at and i uh, had a broken wrist there and a, a, a fractured bone in my leg, so I, I didn't do very well there. So I've been sulking as well yeah. <laughs> since for a little while. So I had four weeks off, and then I broke my ankle uh, four weeks ago. So I've had four wow. weeks off, and then yeah, to see what happens today, I've just come to see and try and make the final. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, how's it feeling? I mean, that's a pretty serious injury. Up yeah. To the eyeballs, I've had about ten paracetamols, and <laughs> we just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so you've got. Tested, then, right? no, 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 I have a profile, I mean. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> As long as that's the right, did you have to go and have your, give you a sample? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, so Charlie, I mean, you've, before the injuries, you were going really well. Yeah, before the injuries, it was going, it was going to be a good season, I was hoping. I had a good meeting at Dalton Barracks, just missed out to, to Bomber. But um, I won GTSA as well. And then, yeah, I've had a good few good meetings abroad uh, in Ludenhausen and stuff. But yeah, obviously just a couple of crashes and a couple of crashes weren't, some of them weren't my fault, some of them weren't my fault. But, yeah, so that's just what just happens with, with Crash up, doesn't it? So. Yeah, it's not uh, not chess, is it? So, yeah, these things happen. But, uh, yeah, thoughts on today, Paul? I mean, it's a great venue. It's a shame about getting people in, but uh, the venue's great. The track seems to be good as well. Yeah, I think fair play again to the club here who've put on, put on what looks like a great track and I think it's going to be good. And also having the bottle to keep the thing running. Quite a lot of clubs might have backed out early doors with the weather looking so bad, the forecast. They might have cancelled it maybe Friday, but this club have kept it kept on with it, and it looks like it's going to be a good race track, a racers track as well. You know, I don't think the race is going to get too spread out. There's going to be a lot of battling, and 
Yeah, it's going to be entertaining for the crowd as well as those riders. It's going to look good, good fun, and the, like I said, the, the ground's going to be going to be spawned for racing. So, I'm just going to get out there and, and, and get, enjoy it. And have a go. Yeah. Well, good luck today, boys. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Hopefully, you get through it, Charlie, with the injury. And uh, we're going to get through. Crash, yes. We're going to get through. Crash it. again as well. That's how I like to say the same for you. Really. So, yeah, so, yeah. We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. We'll all crash together. Don't we each other. <laughs> no, hopefully not. So yeah, hopefully it'll be a good day. And just, yeah, as long as we make the final for obviously for next year's Europe, that's, that's my goal. Yeah. And then, you know, so if you get to the final, it's anyone's game, isn't it? So, yeah. whoever gets to that, whoever gets to the finish line first, isn't it? So, yeah, hopefully. well done. Yeah. Good stuff. Well done, chaps. Uh, yeah, have fun. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Right, uh, two riders that are almost definitely going to be at the point end. We've got the reigning defending champion, Chris Harris, and we've got somebody who's won four titles himself, Paul Hurry. Uh, yeah, he has got four, yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> First of all, Chris, obviously your season on the grass is going, well, it couldn't go any better really at the moment, could it? I can always go better, but it's going, we're pleased with it, yeah, so it's going to be a tough one today, see, we've got this young chap here next to me pushing, so, and obviously Zach's going well, so, you know, it could be, it's an open field today, I think. Yeah, it really is, and uh, Paul, we were saying before that um, it's been a long time since the, sort of the person that's at the top of the world long track is at the Masters, it's probably yourself and Kelvin sort of days. Yeah, it has been a long time, and obviously it's nice that, well, obviously Bob, Bob is world number one at the moment, and um, yeah, if, I mean, it, it would be good if we could get more doing it, uh, but it would be nice to get more in the World Championship, but obviously the standards have sort of slipped a little bit in the UK, um, but yeah, obviously we still keep trying to push it and, and get it back up there. Yeah, we're doing it, you're, you're involved in a lot of that yourself, as we know, but thinking about your racing, uh, you haven't done a lot this year, but obviously you've done a lot of Masters, so you're coming with a lot of lot of experience. Yeah, no, I haven't really done too much. Obviously, I've been busy with the Speedway stuff, helping Scott and the uh, control board um, management shit thing. Um, but yeah, I did do a meeting the other day at GTSA, and I've done four laps, I think, two one race and stops, and then two in the next race. I've not rode a lot, but yeah, I just want to come in and enjoy myself. It probably, well, it will be my last one, so yeah, it's made most of it. Then it's going to be your last one? Definitely. Definitely be last Masters. You're not going to try it, are you? You're too young. No, go. <laughs> it's not my choice, but yeah, it's medical reasons, so I've, yeah, I've got no option. Maybe we'll do the sidecar, you can be a passenger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a new sidecar team starting right now. Yeah, I'd pay to see that. Yeah, passenger, though. <laughs> so, Chris, Masters, it's, uh, you've got a chance to win it for the third time today. Um, and only a couple of people have done that. Kelvin Tatum's done it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not been done a lot. It's hard to defend your title. It's hard to win one, but it's hard to defend it. Yeah, no, it was hard last year to keep it, so it's going to be even harder this year. Say, track's looking good, so hopefully we can uh, say can keep it. But say it's going to be tough. It's a long day. And it's a club, of course, that your main sponsor is involved in heavily. So it's uh, it's almost in a weird roundabout way a home meeting. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, say first time I've been here, so it's going to be interesting. Well, good luck today to both of you. Uh, lots of people here to see the pair of you, um, and I hope it goes very well. Thank you. Yeah. Young Max Derek, number six, riding number six. Young Max is the first one to come round. And we got number 43, Logan Ketteringham. He's out on the riders' parade lap. 41, Hayden Watts. 111, Jesse James. Number 46, Austin Richards, is reserved for the meeting at the moment. 108, Harrison Rogers. 152, Aston Vale. Number 21, Charlie Pryor. Number 48, Ansat Beatty, the reigning intermediate uh, champion. And he'll defend his crown at Cornwall next week. Step line on gate one, Rob Bradley on gate two, McStay's gate three, or Whiteham four, Delphi's five, Terry Saunders on the outside then, all visitors 
second in off the big chair ration. Get away from the outside. It's Terry Sawney. They're in second place. This boys have gone to in the third. Rob Bradley trying to find a way through the go for the third. The feature trying to get around the edge to wide them. Good scrap. off the second and third. The Terry Sawney has stolen them march to the front. He leads them from wide them holding second. Fisher got the third. Bradley trying to find a way through on the inside to go through into that third place. But Fisher's got the third, Bradley again, maybe he move on the inside. Can he drop it inside the fish to go through into third place? Now we come to the moment, and White Lum's closed, and they gap on Terry Saunders going down that back straight once again. Still Saunders leads him from White Lum, holding second place. Fish in third, Bradley is in four. White Lum looking for the inside of Terry Saunders. Line, and Bradley's got inside fish to move from the third super move there by Rob Bradley chasing up to wind them now as they go down the back straight once again Saunders getting away the front then wind them all second Bradley in third fish is dropping back slightly in fourth they go into that pitch corner once again it's Terry Saunders going to lead them on the last one Bradley Bradley has come through from fourth to second wind them goes back round the outside Bradley comes again back up the inside super action between these two as they go in the back straight once again and Bradley's hunting down Saunders now as they go into that pits corner for the final time it's Saunders and Lee for Bradley holding second place Richard Terry Saunders gets second line is in second Whiteman is in third Fish in fourth Fly is in five states in six place. Super action there and Rob Bradley. Rob Bradley shown he's lost none of his skill there, battling through from fourth to be a super second in that race. Super action there in race number five. Excellent win there for number 24, Terry Saunders, Liam Brown. Second with a magnificent ride there, number 87, Rob Bradley and Robbie Simmons. And third, number 92, Paul Whiteman and Richard Webb. 20, 30, and 80. So 24, 87, 92, 20, 30, and 18. Race 6 again, sponsored by Toby and Plant, Steve Smith, Colin Blackburn, Mark Cossack, Kieran Hick, Will Offen, another cracking hitting prospect. So we've got the defending champion. Mark Costa against the multi-champion Steve Smith, Colin Blackburn has also won this title several times. Kieran Hicks is a very quick outfit so again it looks to be a super heat of 1000 cc sidecar action. Kieran Hicks on gate 1, Colin Blackburn gate 2, Steve Smith gate 3, Mark Costa gate 4, Jack Pickard gate 5 and we'll often on gate number 6 for race number 6. Now the six crews coming into line then for race number six, 30 on the big chairs. Costa is in second place trying to make a move around the edge of Blackmore. Blackmore covers a move at the moment coming off that top corner for the first time then. Blackmore leads going down the back straight. Costa two points behind him. These two want to get away from the rest of the pack as they go into the pits corner. Blackmore's got wide. Costa again trying to find a way through on the inside of Blackmore. Go into third, Kieran Hicks is in fourth place. The action's on for first and second and third and fourth, and still Colin Blackburn with the advantage over Mark Cossa going into that pitch corner once again. Smith grimly hanging on to that third place position. Coming through complete lap number two, and it's Blackburn leading. Once again, still got the third. Hicks is in fourth place. Often is in five. There's a race down the back straight once again. Black on the same dish as Adam Costa. Uh, again, Smith's going to come under pressure when Hicks as they go into that pitch corner once again. The last lap, Black B made ready for Colin Blackmore making his best start at the moment. 
Back in action again there in race number six, won by number 25, Colin Blackburn in Carl Pugh. Second number 37, Mark Costa in Carl Blythe. And third number two, Steve Smith in Gareth Little. 78, 80, and 27. 25, 37, 2, 78, 80, and 27. Next race is the Intermediate Solo, sponsored by M&P Dunn. So, coming to line then for the first heat of interaction with the uh, reigning champions at the 18 action. We'll see the Bandis Clown next week, the two day we're at Cornwall. Completely missed the start. Looks to me he's got to battle his way through. Yes, he has. There's going to be a big sword egg coming up on that to top corner that they're coming for the first time. They're two abreast on the exit from the Not corner. Action. Pick them out. They come by us for the first time. Uh, <laughs> Third, Max Derrick is in fourth place. That's the top four. They go on the back straight. Could be a change. The lead is super strong. At the front, Ashton Bell now coming under pressure. And Aiden Watson, they go into that top corner once again. Watson again winding on right round the outside. Bell holding on to the inside line. Aiden Watson got round the outside. Yes, he has. Oh, Watts has gone round the outside but Bell comes again back on the inside super action between these two for first and second place Watts again winding on right round the outside of that top court he's got back round Bale again and takes the lead on the last one then and has win for number 41, Hayden Watts. Second number 152, Ashton Vale. And third, 111, Jesse James. Six, nine, 21, 48, 64, and 43. So 41, 152, 111, 6, 9, 21, 48, 64, and 43. Race 8, delete number 4, bringing number 98, the reserve Paul Smith. Race sponsored by Indigo Scaffolding. Okay. 
Oh, coming to line then for the first team of the 500 sidecars. Oh, suddenly one up in front of the space, Sean Hughes and Louis Bennett not particularly quick away. They're in second place and chase the race they didn't have. We've only got four crews come out for this first heat of the 500. So Hughes and Bennett go roaring through on the inside. They're the ones with the leaders. They come by us for the first time then. It's just... <laughs> Second place, we could. That's the top two as they go to that straight once again. But Hughes and Bennett are in very, very quick this season, and they're storming away now with the first heat of the uh, 500 sidecars. It's still on, holding on that second place. This is a good scrap, but on the third and fourth. <laughs> Jordan Smith in fourth place. Of course, in the third, Jordan Smith is in four. But Hughes and Bennett, they've stolen the march to the front. They're just getting farther and farther away now. And then Hughes and Bennett's the clear leader. James Hobbs. Reserve is hanging on to third place. That's Paul Smith and Toby Beer. So just the Three crews, we started off with four, we're down to three, they're on the middle of the track, the other crew, as uh, Sean Hughes and Louis Bennett in practice with the first seat of the 500 sidecars. It's James Hogg, it's not good when you come across them. Second, Paul Smith and Toby Beer, third place position. The result of that race, sponsored by Indigo Scaffolding, is a win for number 77, Sean Hughes and Louis Bennett. Second, number 73, James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. And third, number 98, the reserve, that Paul Smith and Toby Beer. 77, 73 and 98. There will now be a track grade on the top and bottom bend. The straights are okay, but the riders say they want work to be done on the, both the bends. Aaron Taylor, James Lake and James Theobald and Jack Roberts, the riders in action. left on the line. Red flag is out, red flag is out and that's got to be good news for Paul Cooper because he's been left on the line so I don't quite know what's going on. He had an engine failure in his first and got it going again and he was the one rider left on the line there at the start of race number nine. Somebody clearly pushed into the tapes, they rolled back and then they were released with the red flag out immediately. Bold is excluded for touching the tapes there in race number nine. So Paul Cooper is on two minute time allowance to get the bike sorted out. Every time on a big occasion these problems seem to haunt the wall. I said he got one away in the first and had a machine problem. And it was a good job then. That was a false start. He was clearly that on the line again there. So that's when he's got it sorted out this time. has got away in second. Jack Roberts is working his way to the back. So is Cooperman coming through into fourth place. This is Paul Hurry and Preston winner. First time out. He's still in the car. Second place. 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 That's still the top five years and it's between that five second week. Oh, very much up. 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 O
hanging on to that fifth place cushion. Who is getting away the front then? Brooks, second and third, round the good scrap. Roberts again trying to get back inside. Taylor Taylor again, back where the end. Shows the bottom of that then. Dramatic race number nine, won by number 86, Paul Hurry, two and two for the former champion. Second number 474 is uh, Jack Roberts, and third 101, Cameron Taylor. 11, 12, 45, 117, and 158, Wayne Broaders to come in to replace the excluded James Theobald. 86, 474, 101. 11, 12, 45, 117, 158. Race 10 again sponsored by Jamie Finch. It's a Bob Dorman in place of Eddie Kennedy. Coming to line then for race number 10. Simpson. Splendid effort again there for young Mickey. Second number 26, Luke Harris. And third number 16, the reserve Bob Dolman. 32, 19, 83, and number 2. 87, 26, 16, 32, 19, 83, number 2. Eventful race for all sorts of reasons. Chad Woods felt was fourth in his opening line, so we had some good action again in race number 11, once again sponsored by our friend Jimmy Zink. Grab it up now. Away we go, so we get that group to start. Harris 
hand there, best of start. He worked his way to the back. Charlie Powell leads him, and Harris has gone through inside Powell. Where's that bike? It didn't make the best of starts that time, and it's uh, Harris going wide. Powell against Powell. Inside Powell. Harris riding wide, Tampal taking a much tighter line, trying to find a way through on the inside line, but Harris has got the lead. Harris leads him in second. Right next to Holden Harris. Harris leads him in second. 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 Harris leads
five boxes in set and white them all is set almost inside Owen knows on the exit from that top corner down the back straight they go and into the fifth corner with the last lap flag being made ready it's near Owen by a bike again white them looking for line two on the inside but Owen's not leaving the gap there so race number 12 cracking win there for number 12 Neil Owen and Jason Farwell second number 92 Paul Whiteman and Richard Webb and third number 37 Mark Cossack of Live 191 15 and 78 12 92 37 191 15 and 78 Race 13, delete number 10, put in step and Morgan Blythe. So let's have a look at this heat then. We've got Colin Blackburn, impressive winner first time out. Rob Bradley went through from fourth to second. It is opening line, Mike Austin and Dale and Jordan Fish. So we should be in some more good action in race number 13. Interesting, some of the passengers there clearing the groove. You can see young uh, Robbie Simmons clearing the groove there for Rob Bradley, and Fisher uh, clearing the groove there for his driver. So it's Carl Pugh for Colin Blackburn. So uh, another intriguing hit to the big chairs, race number 13. Coming to line then for race number 13. Rents the car and away they go. Colin Blackmore's made a superb starting and he's a clear leader for the combo. It's all two in the second place. Austin is in third, Rob Bradley again, didn't make the best of starts, he's in fourth place, he's got to do the hard way again now as he goes down the back straight for the first time, Blackmore stole in the mark to the front, Austin has got that second, Bradley gets inside, fish to move through into third place, and sets him out chasing Austin, Austin gone wide and Bradley's come through, on the inside, so Bradley's gone from fourth to Fourth place, absolutely four to go. Down the back straight once again. Bradley almost got inside Colin Blackburn there. They were level coming off that top corner. Down the back straight, they go two by between them as they go in the pitch corner on lap number two. Bradley again trying to get some drive on the inside. He's almost inside Blackburn. He's got 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 inside into the pitch corner once again. It's Bradley leads him for Blackburn holding second place. This is Fish dropping back in third as is Austin in fourth. On the last lap they go Result to win for number 87, Rob Bradley and Robbie Simmons. Second number 25, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. And third number 20, Dale Fish and Jordan Fish. 991, 30 and 68. 87, 25, 20. 991, 30 
and 68 Super running right there for uh, Rob Bradley again coming through from four to first. Race number 14 of the heat of the big chair. Steve Smith, Mick Stakes, Terry Saunders, impressive winner first to make. Jack Pickard, Tom Costa, impressive winner first to make. And Will Offen as well. So something's going to give in this race number 14. Two crews out in action who won their opening ride in very convincing style. Outside goes Tom Costa chasing Terry Saunders now going down that back straight. Once again, Steve Smith drops back to four, looking to get back through into third. Will Offen is out, pinch that third place position. Into the pitch corner they come once again. It's Saunders and Lisa. Tom Costa again trying to find a way forward. In fourth place, a really bunch of the third Top corner again, it's Saunders by a bike, then Tom Costa in second, Tom Costa goes through on the inside, Terry Saunders moved off the line, there was a big gap, and Tom Costa went through that gap to lead into the pitch corner this time then, Tom Costa leads up to Saunders in second, off with it in third. <laughs> Tom Costa, tremendous speed coming off that corner. Saunders has got no answer at the moment. Offers up the good line down in third. Smith is in four. Stakes in five. Picard six. Coming out of the fifth corner. About to start, but you lost that time this time. <laughs> This afternoon, Hoffman has got the third, four stakes in five, pick on six. They're pretty well spread out now in this race number 14. The third heat of the second leg of the big chairs, but it's an important win coming up there for Tom Costa. He's on being up to two. Tony Saunders gets the second. Five, Steve Smith, four. It's stage five, pick in the sixth place. Race 14 result, another impressive winning ride there for Tom Costa. Second number 24, Terry Saunders, Tom Costa and um, Wayne Rickard. Second number 24, Terry Saunders, Liam Brown. And third number 80, Will Offen, Ricky Pay. Two, 18 and 27. So 29, 24, 18, 2, 18 and 27. Seven. We move on then to race 15, second heat of the intermediates, M&P Dunn of the sponsors, Charlie Wood is number 33. So coming out then for his second heat, Charlie Wood out for the first time at this particular class, he's number 33, not 22. Jamie had been turned on to the fine day for his first ride into the round one of the uh, intermediate solos this afternoon. Start from the outside oh, group. He's passed there. Somebody it looks like Austin Richards, the reserve, is coming to me. The lead's going in. Wood again trying to get back around the outside. Max Derrick didn't make the best of starts. He's already up to third place and looking for second place now as they come by us for the. Place in third as they go up the back straight once again. Then the riders have missed the opening ride. Wood and Richards hold first and second place. 
as they go in that top corner once again then. Spectacular score of Charlie Wood right round the outside, which is once again then. Slowly but surely Wood is getting away the front end and Ricky is holding that second place. Derek again coming under pressure. A good race going off the third and fourth place is Roger trying to get inside. Derek has got inside. Derek to move to and the third. And Wood to the which is holding that second plate. Roger now consolidating third with Derek is in four. Amos is in five. Second plate comes out. Johnny Wood wins the second place. Amos is in five. So result in a race number 15, a win for number 33, Charlie Wood. Second number 46, the reserve, Austin Richards, who's obviously come in as a replacement for Zach. And third number 108, Harrison Rogers. Six, nine, 21, and 43. 33, 46, 108, six, nine, 21, and 43. Race 16, the lead number four, putting the reserve Paul Smith, number 98, Paul Smith, with Toby Beer as the passenger. So coming out then for the second heat the five the sidecars, which is by you go scaffolding again to be run as they drive off in just a little bit and uh, we say out for their own device. They go the back straight for the first time and into that uh, top corner. Could well be James Hogg, they're still in a part at the front, just could be trying to back this way through as they come by. Uh, uh, third, A trying to get inside, Goodwin to move back to the second plate, Goodwin again trying to sweep back round the outside, that's allowing Hogg to get away at the front then. It's how you hold that second plate to Goodwin, surprisingly back in third. As they come off that top corner through completely moving up their top. And somebody stopped there, Chris A has come to a stop while holding the second place position. So it's three crews pretty well spread out now. And this is the second heat of the 500 side car action. Not the front running. 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 Second heat of the 500 sidecars, the leader up on that top corner for the final time after second place. First and out, he's going to pick up a winning ride in race number 16. And second place goes to Josh Goodwin, and third will be Paul Smith. Then of race 16, sponsored by Indigo Scaffolding, a win for number 73, James Hogg and Scott Goodwin. Second, number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. And third, number 98, Paul Smith and Toby Beer.
flag out. Do we have a red one? We've got yellows. We now have a red. Yes, we We now have a red. That's interesting because Paul Hurry was left on the line not long with another rider. Second place position, going in that top corner for the first time. Oh, are we already starting <laughs> <laughs> the back straight once again. Then hurry and Biden uh, then getting away in the first and second place. If Fence with having a good ride, hanging on to that third change for fourth place. The GB Finch sponsored race 17, won by number 86, Paul Hurry. Second number 109, Zach Bikenet. And third number 32, Jamie Van Smith. 126, 67. 17 and 83. 86, 109, 32, 126, 67, 17 and 83. Race 18, Tim Nodes, Paul Cooper, desperate for points, Dan Winterton, Chad Wordsfeld, Cameron Taylor, the best of these riders for best play to these riders for race 18. Seconds remaining. One minute, ten seconds remaining.
30 seconds, 30 seconds. As Cam Taylor goes from the second place, there goes De making a big move round the outside and throwing it into that top corner is your race in that race leader. Is Nino. Third place is Nino. Fourth place is Nino. Back round four, Cooper to retake that second place. There's no lead yet. And Taylor in second, Cooper gets inside Taylor and sets about changing nerves again on the exit from that corner. No using every inch of track at the front. Taylor again, just going in for two corners. Quarter to four. Just check out, right? That's actually no ten to four. So I am going to take out the semis and the support class. So whatever races we got left, we would go with, but there'll be no semis and there'll be no support class now. Adrian, but that last heat, are we rerunning? Yes. We are. But this is the big problem I've got. I honestly don't know how long that's going to take. I really don't. And I don't think even they know. So we might be um, the plan again. Yeah. Yeah, we're your hand. So, but this, that's, at this moment in time, it's four o'clock, so we're going to go with no semis and do away with support classes. If that is the case, will you we won the meet and yeah. have a start? That's not for me to make the decision like that. So it stands at four, so four heats on the four. Yeah. Yeah. So we still got two heats to go. Yeah. Yeah, they do. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you have, you have. But like I said, we need to see what's happening over there. Yeah, I can't make that 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 exactly. To me, that's 100 percent priority. Well, right. Totally. And I'm not going to make any decisions until that's sorted. Yeah. And I'm happy with what's happened over there. As far as I'm concerned, this means on hold now until whatever happens over there. Like I said, I've just told you what I think. That doesn't mean to say that's going to happen. Like I said, so the most important thing is over there.